Welcome to Harvest International Ministry. We had a hiatus this past week. We got to go away and uh, have someone else minister to us, you know, because every once in a while I need refilling too. And I thank God that I, I came back and, you know, my tank is full. Hopefully, you know, I get some solar panels added to it. That way my tank can go a little bit further. <laughs> so I'm, I'm grateful to be here. And today we're celebrating Mother's Day. So, uh, so happy Mother's Day to all of you who are watching. Uh, I gave my life to the Lord because of my mom. My mom was my fifth gospel. It was Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Rosa. And my mom was tireless in her life for Christ. You know, there's certain virtues that we only know by living with someone. And I got to see her pray for the people that hated her. She would name the people that hated her and she would bless them. And she did it every morning. She would pray for her friends and she would pray for her enemies. I got to see the love of Christ in her. And I haven't gotten to that point yet to the testimony that she had for me. And she's been gone a lot longer than I had her. But I can tell you I appreciate moms because your voice continues to live on even long after you're gone. So happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. Uh, would you please help me pray? Father, I thank you for this great day that you have made. Lord God, we had an excellent worship service this morning. Lord, but that's the least that we can do. Father, you made both male and female. Lord God, and you told them to multiply and subdue the earth. Father, and by multiplying, they became fathers. They became mothers. Father, you have lots of instructions for the fathers. But Lord, there's not so much for the mothers. So help us understand what is your view for the role that is so magnificent. Lord God, you chose Mary before you chose Joseph. Father, how important that role is for you. That Lord God, that you spoke to Mary before you spoke to, Moses, to uh, Joseph. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God. Lord God, let every mom here feel loved, encouraged, blessed. Lord God, if they should be overwhelmed, let them be overwhelmed with good things. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Proverbs 31, 28 and 29. This is who I call the impossible woman. See, why is she the impossible woman? Because she does things that we strive to do. I have discovered this, that women who uh, worked on their children, when the children get older, the children bless them. The children tell everybody how good their mom was. But I also discovered the opposite. If the mom did little for the children, the children rise up and curse their mother. See, we live in a time today where motherhood, it's not so important anymore. We are stuck with so many other responsibilities that raising a child becomes something that we give to other people to do for us. See, we knew a young man that the parents didn't really pay him any attention. And every time we went somewhere, he got to go with us, and it was without any problem. They gave the money. Yeah, take him to Disney. Yeah, take him there. Take him there. Take him the other. Now, he, had, he came from money, so he had money, so they always sent him wherever he wanted to go. If there was one kid that we knew was coming with us, it was that particular kid. He always got to go to everything we went to. And while I was told he had behavior problems, he never gave me a struggle. To me, he was a perfect kid. I mean, I liked the kid so much, I'm like, well, I hope my daughter marries that kid. I really liked the kid. 
Yeah, I know he had his struggles. But at 19, the kid passed away. And I was the one that did the funeral. And the father stood up and talked about how much he loved his son. But then I knew you didn't spend any time with him. He didn't think you loved him. I know this because he came to me and asked me, what does he have to do to be emancipated from his parents? So I knew he wasn't, he didn't feel love. So moms, this is the hardest job you have, is being a mom. It is the only job that you'll give everything you have to and when you pass away, you will leave everything you gain to the people you gave everything you had. It is a non-ending task. Believe me, I have kids that have left my house and I have discovered you don't stop being a parent because they left your house. They still call on me. They still need me for things. And even though they don't want to put that pressure on me. Life happens. Being a mom is the hardest thing that you will ever do. Because you never stop being a mom. See, we're soon going to be grandparents. And it's going to be interesting being grandparents because we don't have to be parents. Now, we'll have to be parents to the new mom. But we don't have to be parent to the new baby. To the new baby, we're going to be grandparents, and we already planned it out. We're going to spoil the grandbaby. That grandbaby's going to get away with things that my kids couldn't even dream of getting away with. I already have the speech made out for when, a, oh, don't whoop her, poor baby. And my, my, my daughter's going to look at me and go, Dad, you uh, I know what I did. But I'm not the parent, I'm the grandparent. I'm the one that has to show grace and mercy. <laughs> You're the one that has to set the rules. Don't get my role confused. I'm, I'm already prepared for the new role. I got it. <laughs> and when the next grandbaby comes, I'm just going to spoil them because they're going to love going to Papa's house. I hope they don't call me Papa. I know somebody's going to call me Papa, But whoever does it, I'm going to love it. I know I will. In my head, I'm like, don't call me that. But in my spirit, I'll be like, oh, that's so wonderful. The duplicity of being a grandparent. See, I'm already looking forward to the next step. But my daughter has to be a parent. And she has to be the one to understand that parents worry about their kids. Don't we? We worry about, we don't ever stop worrying about them. It is the craziest thing to think I have had nights to where I'm worried about my 25-year-old son. Where is he? I haven't heard from him. Is he okay? Anybody has heard from him? Do you know if he's working tonight? Do you know how early can I call him in the morning? He's been running through my mind all night long. What in the world? I don't think my dad worried about me when I was 25. If he did, I never noticed. <laughs> See, I worry about my kids. And you say, well, that's not Christian. Like, try stopping your brain from functioning. Because I know I pray myself to try to stop. And my brain just said, the more I pray, the more it just comes up. So, you know, I end up putting on cartoons. Cartoons calm me down. They make me sleepy. <laughs> so women, here it is. Where our point is this. We want you to get to finally hearing your kids sing your praises. That's what we want. I want when you get older and your kids get older, they will be singing your praises. That when they start talking about you, that their face will beam. Not like, oh, I can't stand my mom. You know, it's so funny working in my school because they put plural on their mom. They say, my mom's. <laughs> Don't you call my mom's. And I'm like, is it your mom or your mom's? How many moms do you have? Uh, no, I just have one mom's. 
you know I teach English to newcomers, you know. Moms make it plural. You mean singular? You know what I mean. Well, why do they have to make the role of the mom plural? I figured it out. Because whenever they're talking about moms, it is the one role that's playing mom and dad. Ooh. Yeah, all my kids who come from a single family home call their mom moms. Oh, they are doing dual role and they don't even know that their heart is speaking through their mouth because of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so some moms have to play dual role they gotta be mommy and they gotta be daddy and sometimes they look schizophrenic because sometimes you gotta be the tough one and sometimes come here baby come here baby come here now it doesn't mean that because you have a man living in your house. You're not doing dual role. Ooh. Okay. Hey, I'm going to go there. All right. Okay. The role of a mother has evolved over time, influenced by so societal, cultural, and technological changes. Traditionally, a mother was expected to be a primary caregiver for her children, responsible for their physical and emotional well-being, education, and spiritual development. However, with the rise of the feminism and woman liberation movement in the 20th century, mothers have taken one more uh, diverse role in society. So moms have become more complicated. They have more to do. See, if you went to mom 100 years ago, she'll be worn the mess out. But mom raised their kids to raise their kids. Did I lose anybody? A hundred years ago, moms raised their kids to help raise the smaller kids. So when you had a 14-year-old daughter in your house, the 14-year-old daughter was taking care of the 13-year-old, the 12-year-old, the 11-year-old, the 10-year-old, the 9-year-old, the 8-year-old. Now try leaving a 12-year-old in charge. Mom has to take care of everybody. It's not like how it used to be to where you can leave other responsibilities to other people because we have now raised our children to be selfish. It's all about them. Now, that's not the structure that we want, so we need to get this structure correct because all sin comes from selfishness. So if we're teaching our kids to be selfish, we are teaching our kids to have freedom in being sinners. So we need to teach our kids not to be selfish. Well, how do you teach your kids not to be selfish? They are their brother's keeper. It is their job. The older takes care of the younger. It is their responsibility to make sure that the, everyone in the family is taken care of. Not just mom. Not just dad. Everyone. So I know I'm familiar with the feminist movement. I understand. I have daughters. I'm not against women having rights. I'm not against them getting paid equally like men. I am not against any of those things. I just want to know if my grandbaby is going to have mom home or if mom going to become moms. I want the grandbaby to be given the same thing that she was given. Love, attention, encouragement. Every once in a while, a little smack on the behind. We understand. Because, you know, kids don't understand tomorrow. They understand right now. Ladies, these are some of the things that really bothered me. And I'm going to share with you the things that really bothered me. The rate of fatherlessness varies across different regions and countries. In the United States, the rate of fatherlessness has been a concern for many years. According to the U.S. Census Bureau in 2020, approximately 19.5 million children under the age of 18 lived in households without a father present. That translates to about one in four children in the United States living 
and fatherless household. One in four. So if you count off all your friends, start counting in, group of, in groups of four, one out of those groups of four is going to be raised in the family without a dad. If you go to certain neighborhoods, it moves to one and two. Go to other neighborhoods and you're going to find out having a father is something you hardly ever see. So what happened with mom? Mom must become moms. You become plural because you have to do more than one role. So how do you minister to a mom on Mother's Day that happens to be moms? I'll tell you, you, did, you need double honor. You need for all of us to give you more encouragement because it's hard to do everything by yourself. It's hard to fill every role and then every responsibility all by yourself. But I've noticed some of these mom that have to be moms. I called one a few years ago. I was working in Fulton County, and I grabbed my cell phone, and I told the student, if you don't stop acting up, I'm going to call your mom. And he said, no, you're not. You're not going to call my moms. And I said, yes, I am going to call your moms. And while he was busy tyranting in my room, I called his mom, and I started talking on the phone. Yes, this is Mr. White. I have your son being belligerent in front of my face right now. And he looked at me. He says, I know you did not talk to my moms, because if you're talking to my moms, I'm going to smack you. Yes, that's him right now. Yes, the one that said he's going to smack me. Yeah, he looks like Goliath over here. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, okay, you'll be right over five minutes. God, that's not my, I know you're not talking to my mom. Uh, and then all of a sudden he heard her voice. I'm going to be there in five minutes. <laughs> yes, ma'am, we'll be, we'll be waiting for you. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, bye-bye, okay. And all of a sudden he tried to calm down. He says, I'm sorry, Mr. White, you know, I'm off my medicine. Yeah, I didn't take my medicine this morning. You didn't have to call my moms. I said, too late. I called your moms. <laughs> and your moms is on her way. Now, this kid was this big. He was a giant. To me, he was a giant. He was bigger than me. Now, I, I think I could have taken them, but yeah, I would have gotten fired. So I didn't want, <laughs> I didn't want to go to those extremes. And when his mom came in the room, his mom was this big. She was like an Oompa Loompa. She was so small. She walked in the room, and I'm like, uh, oh, my goodness, I need to see this because you, we pay for this on pay-per-view. This is going to be excellent. And she looked at me, and she said, uh... I don't want to embarrass myself in front of you. Don't worry. I see no evil, hear no evil, say no evil. Be yourself, honey. Be yourself. And she went up to that boy and she grabbed the top of his shirt and pulled him down to her face. <laughs> oh, and I saw that kid just become a little child. All of a sudden, yes, mom, yes. I'm never doing it again, Mom. I'm so sorry, Mom. I wish she didn't have to come here, Mom. I'm so sorry. And she said, wait till you get home. And I'm like, oh, my Lord, thank you for moms. Because it didn't matter how big that boy was. Fear is the beginning of wisdom. Mom, don't you speak to your child like he's your best friend? Because children don't respect their friends. They respect their parent. Be a parent to your child. See, I have a certain tone that when I speak with that tone, all my children come to attention. They know I'm not playing. Now, see, I'm a playful parent. I love to play with my kids. 
I love to say jokes. I love to make them laugh. Uh, but every once in a while, I need to be serious. And they understand that serious tone. And I watch these parents who will tell you things like, not my child. Uh, it's not my child that did. I know that's not my child. Really. No one ever told you that your child will do things that you don't know of. Weren't you ever a child? Sometimes, parents, we say some nonsensical things. I just got to be honest. Because we were all children. And when we were children, we did things we weren't supposed to do. Did we forget that? I was the perfect child. Understand that. I'm speaking to you from a perfect standpoint of view. My parents thought that I was the next coming. <laughs> they thought I never did anything wrong, ever. And I was the worst child ever. <laughs> I would do things because I was smart. I would get away with the things that I did. But I would blame it on my brothers and sisters because they weren't that perfect. They got the whoopings for the things I did. Oh, and they got whooping, and if they made me mad, I'll make sure they get a good whooping. I mean, a good one. See, I grew up where my brothers and sister smacked the mess out of me every day. I mean, just punched me straight in the face. One time, my oldest brother punched me so hard in the face, my eyes closed. I, I couldn't see anywhere. I wasn't Asian. I was nothing. I was totally closed. I couldn't even see light. My whole face swelled up. And I try to go to school like that, but I'm like, I can't see where I'm going. I can't see. I'm going to have to stay home. Yeah. <laughs> My whole face purple. So, you know, I came up with an idea. I'm going to make dad whoop the mess out of you. <laughs> and my dad did. So we can't tell the story because y'all will tell on me. <laughs> my brothers are all alive. <laughs> I don't need them to come over here. <laughs> I'm going to get you back for that whooping I got. <laughs> See, I was a bad kid. But my teachers didn't know it. My parents didn't know it. Y'all, my brothers and sisters didn't know it. So for all of you who think you're slick, you're not. Because again, my brothers and sisters didn't know it. Because I didn't do anything in front of people that knew me. I did things with people that I didn't know. That was safe. So if all you come to school talking about not my child, and then all of a sudden they got to pull out the video, and then after you see the video, you just got to be quiet because you know nobody's going to ever believe you again. Where is the old-fashioned? What, the mailman whoop you? Oh, I'm going to whoop you too. But, 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 get, go in the room and prepare. That's what my dad said. Go in the room and prepare. I want you to kind of explain that to me because I'm 53 years old. I still don't understand how do you prepare for a whooping? Do you go in there and begin to tell yourself mantra, I'm not going to feel it, I'm not going to feel it, I'm not going to feel it. Uh, oh, I was wrong, I felt it. <laughs> <laughs> How is it that you prepare? You couldn't really prepare for the whooping. Either that, you looked really deformed. You put on every underwear you had. And they're like, all of a sudden, wait, how, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> there was no way to really prepare. I think, you know, my dad did that to kind of stall so you can think about the pain you're about to feel and when you felt the pain you thought it was more painful because you already felt the pain before you felt the pain <laughs> I know I've done that with Jordan I told him I'm gonna whoop him and go and prepare and then two hours later I remembered <laughs> he's, he's in the room crying the whole time for two hours two hours crying preparing for the whooping and I forgot all about him. I'm outside doing some chore and come back in. And <laughs> He's waiting in the world. What? I forgot. I walk in the room. I said, never mind. Go to your room. Because, you know, he cried for two hours. 
He don't cry that long when I whoop him. I mean, I whoop him and he's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Globally, the rate of fatherlessness is more difficult to estimate due to vari variations in data collection and reporting across countries. However, fatherlessness is a growing concern in many countries. For example, in the United Kingdom, it is estimated that one in three children live in fatherless homes. In some developing countries, the rate of fatherlessness may be even higher due to factors such as poverty, migration, and conflict. Fatherlessness can have negative impact on children and fam families, such as increased risk of poverty, behavioral problems, and decreased academic achievement. So moms today, I got to congratulate you for sticking it out. See, when God has called men to be the head of of the home we're the first one leaving and the moms are being stuck all by themselves trying to raise boys to be men now it's hard to raise a boy to be a man when you don't know what it is to be a man you're aiming at something that hopefully you get it right Proverbs 31, 25, and 26, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithfulness, instructions in her, her tongue. See, mom, you have to be the wise one in the family. See, God considers wisdom to be feminine, not masculine. Whenever I start to think of what was wise, I think of mom, not of dad. You represent the wisdom. When you speak, they might not be listening, but it'll come back up again. It'll come back up when they need it. Because I have seen uh, the football games, and you know, all of a sudden you have the playoffs, and here one team won, and they ask the football player, the big, strong football player, and as soon as he gets on the camera, he says, Hi, Mom. And I always thought to myself, where in the world is Dad? Because usually, Dad is the one that went out to play football with him every day. He is a professional football player. And the one that encouraged that was the Dad. So why you just won you're going to say, hi, mom. Because while the dad gave him the skill needed to be in football, the mom made him a rational, emotional person. Mom, your power is without equal. All the greatest men in the world can say that they have been great because they had a great mother. I've never met someone that was great that came from having a horrible mom. We just were uh, spent this past weekend at a TDJ's conference, and when he began to speak on his mom, it always was the tone in the room changed because he wasn't raised by dad. Dad passed away when he was young. He was not raised by an absentee dad. His dad was there until he passed away. But after his dad passed away, his mom took the role of being moms. For all of you that are sitting in this room and you are about to be a mom, you've been a mom, you're about to be a grandma, it is the most important thing that we can do. See, if we live forever, we'll have no need of motherhood. But since we don't live forever, we duplicate our efforts by reproducing. Mom gives the knowledge and wisdom that is passed down through the eons. I met this lady that she would make her, her ham. And I watch her make the ham. And she will cut a piece of the ham off. And she will throw it away. And I asked her, so 
why are you throwing that ham away? She says, I don't know. My mom did it this way, so I've been doing it that way ever since. But why don't you ask your mom why she threw away a good amount of the ham? And she did. She called her mom, Mom, why is it that we throw away part of the ham? And the mom said, because it didn't fit on my tray. It became a tradition for her to cut it off without knowing that mom had a small stove and it couldn't fit in that oven that she had. So she had to cut part of it off and unfortunately she threw it away. But now we have these big ovens and the daughter is following the tradition of the mom but didn't know that the tradition was because of size. There are some traditions that we follow. If we still have mom alive, that's your mom. Why is it you do it that way? So we pass down good traditions and get rid of traditions that we should have never had while we still get a chance. My wife got to do a function at her school and one year she had uh, southern food. And she came home, she said, honey, this southern food is soul food. This is white people southern food and i ate it collard greens and rice you know and barbecue chicken fried chicken this year she had soul food african-american table they were all happy about their soul food it was the same food <laughs> so why in the world do black people and white people here in the South have the same food, but they call it opposite things. The reason why is the black slaves cooked it. The slave cooked for the white family. The black folks cook for the black family. It's the same food. They've been eating the same thing. Why all of a sudden they never notice that they're eating the same thing until my wife puts a function together and they're all eating all in the soul food section. And this is just like grandma makes it. it tastes just like grandma. <laughs> well, someone finally had to take that line in the sand away and let them know it's the same culture, y'all. It's the same culture. It's the same food. We just have one person say it is ours and the other one says it's ours. While well, the, the whole time, it was both. Women, you're the one that speaks wisdom. So speak it. Stop holding back. Stop holding back wisdom. Do you know what happens when you hold back wisdom? See, understand that God says this. He gives wisdom freely and without reproach. That means there's no string attached. You ask God for wisdom, he gives it to you. No strings attached. You don't have to be good. You don't have to be bad. You don't have to be green, polka dot, any of those things. You don't need no pre-qualifiers. You ask for wisdom, he'll give it to you for free. So why do we have so many dumb people? If wisdom is given freely, why do we encourage to be ignorant? The reason why is that we don't want to go to God. We want to pretend there's no such thing as God. So I'm not going to ask for wisdom because if I ask for wisdom, then I have to acknowledge that there's a God. And I don't want to acknowledge that there's a God, so I'm going to stay right where I'm at. Well, those of you who were brought up in a Christian home should understand certain things of being a Christian how your mom lives in our ministry for many years we've been trying to make our men understand that their role is to be high priests in their home and the more we've hit that horse the faster the men have left because here's a reality our men today don't want to be men they want the women to be the men but then they'll always rise up and say they're the high priest of the home when they can't get their way. So we're going to exercise on what we got. We got a lot of women. So therefore, we're going to use what God has given us. Because every man 
came out of a woman. There is no man alive that didn't come out of a woman. Imagine if we got to come out of a man. I'm telling you, we would have had one child. We wouldn't have any other one. It would have just been Elijah. And Elijah would have heard it all his life how hard it was to deliver him. Every single day, I'll be wearing a t-shirt. I'll never do this again. <laughs> to give birth to a child, I've seen it three times. After the first time, I thought, this is it. This is it. I will never do it. How my wife squeezed my hand was enough. Thought, never. You had to see. I had no color in my hand. You notice that I have color on my hand. I had no color. No. She squeezed every drop of blood out of my fingers. And at the whole time, I had to be manly. Because she was the one having the contraction. She reminded me I wasn't the one pregnant. <laughs> so here is the reality. We have men that are vacating their responsibility faster than ever. When we look at our European counterpoint, they're worse than we are. One in three. Here we have one in four. We're trying to remind our men that you're supposed to be the head. But instead, we don't know how to deal with the children. We don't know how to deal with the pressure. Where did that come from? Moms, I'm sorry to have to give that back to you. But let's stop raising kids that have jelly backbones. I grew up in a time when it says, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's the time that I grew up. Today's time, be careful with your words because they wound. What changed? The mindset changed. All of a sudden, words are so important that it can wound you to the innermost part of yourself. When I grew up, words were something that were surface. You can tell me I was ugly. Man, I kind of enjoyed hearing it from girls when they called me ugly. Because the girls that called me ugly were usually really, really pretty. They were always the real, real pretty girls and all oh, you so ugly. And then I'm like, mm-hmm, watch. You're going to be my girlfriend in two weeks. Oh, they encouraged me. I learned to be encouraged by negatives. When I heard the negatives, I was like, yes. Yes, I think they wrote a song about me in my generation. It went like this. A las mujeres les gustando los hombres feos. Okay, let me translate. Women today like ugly men. Okay, I thought that was about me. I, I don't know who they were talking about, but I took it, and when I heard it, I'm like, amen. <laughs> hey, I will see a pretty girl, and I will walk up there and start talking to her. I remember it was so bad that the youth group that I grew up with would bet me that I couldn't get a girl's phone number. They do understand, it wasn't like y'all, y'all have cell phones. Everywhere you go, you have cell phones. And you just kind of put your phone next to someone else's phone and they got their phone number. That's not how it was when I was growing up. You had one number and that was for the whole house. So when you call the girl's house, the dad will pick up, the mom will pick up. Hello, can I speak with Veronica? Who is this? So they didn't just hand out the phone number to everybody because you're, you will probably have to talk to their dad. And you had to be impressive. You come in, yeah, what's up? You know what's going on. Is You couldn't do that because he'll hang up on you. So when you asked the girl for a phone number, it was serious. So the kids in my youth group, and I was a kid too, they said, I bet you a dollar you can't get her phone number. Oh, man, a dollar is not a lot of money. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was 200 of them against one of me. You did the math. It wasn't a dollar no more. It was $200. That was, that was a lot of money back then. 
That, that was a whole week working, a full-time job back then. And I will look at the girl, and I'm like, bet. And they all understood, hey, he's going to pay out $200. And I remember this one particular young lady. She's from Columbia, petite, brown, my color, with actual blonde hair. And I walked up to the girl, and I said this. Don't look. Would you walk with me for a little while? All those guys back there bet me a dollar each that I can't get your phone number. Just walk with me for a little while and put any seven digits in my hand. And she went walking with me. And three hours later, we came back. And she said, this is my real number. Call me. See, here's the thing. I knew what to say. Because I had a lot of people in my life that were saying things. I knew what to listen to and what not to listen to. Young people, you need to be aware. People are always going to talk. They're always going to say something about you. Always. Learn to take in the things that are good and reject the things that are bad. It's no different today than it was back then. Now your filters are broken. Now you take in all the negative stuff. And you start wearing it on your shoulder. And you start telling yourself, I'm not that pretty. I'm not that smart. I don't have it going on. I have a gap in my teeth. I got big ears. I got one eye off and the other. You start telling yourself all the negative stuff that you have. Mom, here's where you come in. Honey, no one's perfect. But if you feel good in the inside, Everybody will see your insides before they see your outsides. The person you need to impress is the person that's trying to be impressed. Moms, you start to speak those things, and it doesn't matter. See, I grew up where well, they told me, the kids told me I had big lips. I know it's in now, but when I was a kid, it wasn't in. They used to make fun of my lips. You got those big old, and they used to call them bubble lips. You got those big old bubble lips. And I'm like, well, thank you. You're saying thank you for, <laughs> I'm a better kisser than you. They got to kiss your gums. I got lips. <laughs> See, I had a positive for all their negatives they threw at me. Because I had a house full of siblings. They told me all the raunchiest things, and I had to learn to have good character. I had to learn. And I remember one time this person was making fun of me. He had no lips at all. And I'm like, man, you can't even smile. You're going to crack your mouth. You can't stretch that much. I mean, I can smile really big. Don't try it. You're going to break. It's not enough Vaseline in the world. <laughs> See, whenever someone went off on me, I felt good in the inside because my mom built me. My mom built my insides. She gave me so much love that she just poured it all on me. And whenever I went somewhere, I don't know what it is to have a negative uh, idea of myself. I don't know what that feels like. I've never had it. Whenever I walked in, I wasn't impressed by the people who were, had fame because to me, I was just as famous. I was just undiscovered. <laughs> Everyone in here, moms, your kids are having issues that other kids have never had before. All this cyberbullying, I can't imagine someone cyberbullying me. Because if they're cyberbullying me on Facebook, I'm deleting Facebook. 
If they're going to cyber bully me on tweeting, I don't even know what that is. Tweeting. Tweety bird. What is it that they call it? Twitter. <laughs> you see what? It's a tweet, right? All right, so if they were doing that, you know I've never even been on there one day. I only got Facebook and my wife set it up. I, I'm not into social media. So if you, I have Snapchat, but none of you are my friend. <laughs> the only people that I have are my, my family, my kids. That's it. Everybody else, I'm sorry. To me, I don't really care what you have to say. Why? I was raised that way. Moms, you know what they do on those social media. They filter all the ugly stuff out and leave all the pretty stuff in. And then they make fun of people that didn't filter out like how they filtered out. So we got to teach our kids, feel good about how God made you. You were perfectly and wonderfully made. You were made on purpose. And God is a master builder. Everything he makes is a masterpiece. It's one of a kind. No one in all the history of mankind ever has been like you. No one. You will never be repeated. You're one of a kind. So mom, why do so many one of a kind take their life away? Because someone made fun of them. Or go to in school and kill all these one of a kind. Because someone somewhere made fun of them. This is where moms have to work at home. You start building them when they're little. When they're little. See, I have Adrian and I have Jordan. And Adrian and Jordan knows the areas that they have weaknesses. So if you tell them, they already know it. Why? They were informed a long time ago. A long time ago, they were informed. But they were informed in such a way that it was funny. They had big ears. Ooh, look at you with those satellites. <laughs> nah. Woo. When you get married, ooh, the first woman that grabs your ear, that's the one you're going to marry. You're going to be like, uh, oh, yes. I, I say yes. <laughs> I say yes. <laughs> I said, when we got them, they had certain body types that were different. And we knew someone's going to make fun of them. So what did we do? We made them callous. We made them callous to it, to where now if someone says it, you know, right now while I'm preaching, we have people laughing, and the person that I'm talking about is laughing too. Why? Because there's a callous built up. It's no longer, you can't use it against me. It's now a for me thing. This is for me. You're going to mention it, and it's like, oh, man, the first girl that grabs my ears, that's the one I'm going to marry. Girls, don't try hold it grabbing his ears because he got it in his head. He's going to marry you. <laughs> <laughs> so why do we need to do this at home? I remember when Ariel was born. She was born red like a tomato. She was red. All perfectly black hair, raven hair, red skin tone. Ooh, second day I went to the hospital. I'd, I'd been praying already, Lord God, change her color. Goodness gracious, this red child. Ooh, I know I have native in my blood, but goodness, I didn't know it was that strong. <laughs> She's all red. She's just red, 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 red. Come back two weeks later, the child is still red. She's still red. I'm like, Lord God, make some man that will fall in love with his red child, please. Somewhere in the world, someone has to love red. And I had t 
to just when she was born, my sister called. So how does she look like? She's a red child. She is red. She is red. She just red, 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 red. I don't know who in the family is so red, but she's red. Child is red. Beautiful child, except she's red. I was prepared for her to know while she's growing up. Honey, red is not normal, but it's okay. All right, God made you someone that just loves red. Your color red, your complexion red is going to be loved. You're going to be famous. You're going to be the only red person to ever reach a level of fame. <laughs> I was prepared to make her feel like this is normal for her. Well, God changed her color, so all my preparation didn't really matter. <laughs> Elijah was born two-tone. He was being strangled by his own umbilical cord, so neck on down, he was really, really white. Neck on up, he was really black. He came out the wound, and I'm like, Lord God, I got a zebra. <laughs> he, he has only two stripes. One white one, one black one. But I love him. I, I love him with his two stripes. <laughs> I was prepared <laughs> to be able to introduce him to the world as the first human zebra. I was prepared. <laughs> but he normalized and he became one tone. <laughs> See, here's the first thing, Mom. Shakespeare said this, to your own self be true. When you look at your kids, be honest. And be okay with the honesty. Be okay with being honest with your child. Don't present things before their time. When they're at a certain age, they only can handle certain things. But when they get older, you can present new things. And it's your job, mom, to be able to love your child with your child's defects. Don't have a total stranger walk up to your child and tell your child they're defective. We are all defective. Every one of us have defects. But when mom brings the defects to my attention, is so my defect won't be so noticed. She wants everything that's good to be noticed first. That's not how moms are raising their kids anymore. Moms are fake with their own children. Oh, my baby's so beautiful. Oh, isn't she gorgeous? Now you know. You know I'm a man of God. I must say the truth. Why are you going to put me in such a spot? Bless her little heart. <laughs> Come on now. I'm, be honest. If your child, I've seen ugly people become beautiful with makeup. Y'all seen those YouTube too, don't they? Look at me like you haven't seen it. Today, you can do wonderful things with makeup. But eventually, you got to take that makeup off. Eventually, you got to feel okay with how you look without the makeup. So, moms, this is where you come in. You know what? You're beautiful to me. You're beautiful to me. And someone will see the beauty that I see. I have young ladies that come to church and they have such low self-esteem. And the reason why I've noticed they have low self-esteem is because mom has taken all the time to want attention for herself. Because mom has low self-esteem. And if you got to meet grandma, you're going to find out grandma had low self-esteem. If you had a chance to meet great-grandma, great-grandma has a low self-esteem. So moms, I'm going to help you right now where you are. Esteem yourself like God esteems you. Because God said, I love you with a never-ending love. <laughs> and when he made you, he made sure that he wasn't going to make another one like you 
because he thought you were perfect. Now, if you can take in how God thinks of you, you won't pass on low self-esteem to your children. Esteem yourself highly. Not better than others, but not worse than them either. God wants us to have a balanced view of who we are. God wants you balanced. The word of God says that a false balance is an abomination unto God. So he wants you right there. Balance. Not too much and not too little. So we all need to pray that way. Lord God, make all our mothers to have a balanced esteem so she can pass on a balanced esteem to her children. My daughter recently had a DNA exam and she was a little discouraged when she said, you know, um, they found I have a, a trace of sickle cell. And I wrote, yeah, that's from your mom. So plain, so dry. It's from your mom. If your husband don't have it, you're fine. If your husband don't have it, you're good. No problem. If your husband have it, we're going to start praying. Because then you both have a trace. Wait, I married someone with a trace, trait of sickle cell. Do you think I care? I don't have any. What, what happened? All my kids have a trace of sickle cell. Well, why do they all have a trace of sickle cell? Because they came from their mother as well. Mom, you can imprint in your child, not just in their DNA, but in their emotions. Oh, I am really preaching now. If your child has a resilient emotional life, they don't need therapists or psychologists or psychiatrists. If they have a strong emotional life, they can recover quickly. But how do we do that? We do it by first remembering that life is not about you, but it's about the ones who you are ministering to. Moms, you're ministering to your children. You minister to them first before you minister to anybody else. Know that your children are blessed because you've blessed them. And when someone says, not my child, you sit there and say, I have blessed them. I know I have blessed them. But every once in a while, the enemy tries to come in. And what do you do then? You fight for them. Because the enemy is out after your kids. It is a dangerous place to be in school today. We didn't think school was dangerous 100 years ago. School is dangerous now because your enemy is your friend. So when we send our kids to school, Listen, don't make fun of anybody. If you hear someone making fun of someone, you stay away from the, the people who are making fun of folks. And when you can, stand up for the one who is being made fun of because your life may depend on it. Make your kid to be strong enough, not just about themselves, but around others. To be the defender of the weak. I thank God for the opportunity of having a great mom. And four days after my 13th birthday, she went on to be with the Lord. Then God gave me a replacement. And he gave me a, my piano teacher became as my family. And I remember telling my wife, I'm going to go and introduce you to my piano teacher. And if she says no, I will not marry you. And yes, I meant it. 
because what she thought was so important to me that I knew that that woman loved me without reservation. Now I want you to know we weren't the same color and we didn't come from the same country. And she was of an advanced age and I was in my early 20s. But I thought that her idea of who I am was so important that no one could get in the way. And I took my girlfriend to her house and I said, this is Jennifer. I want to marry her. And she looked at Jennifer and then looked at me and she said, do you love her? And I said, yes, I do. And she said, well, I love her too. Wow. Without reservation, you don't know her. You just seen her for the very first time. But you know what she was saying? I trust you enough to put down my barriers to receive her as mine. Moms, you got to be able to pull down your barriers and accept those things that your kids love. You might not like it. <laughs> I know my son likes this quirky music. He likes video game music. I mean, I thought music was bad. Sitting there listening to video game music. Now he was right. Now video game music is in the movies. <laughs> I sat there and watched Mario Brothers, and as I go, and he was getting all nostalgic hearing the music that he heard all his life. And you know, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's become real music now. It's it's mainstream. I always thought like, oh, my son has this weird taste in music, and instead of criticizing his music, I sat there and understood it. And thought that no one was going to write such simplistic music and it become popular. But now they're making orchestrations on those music. He was right. See, I have one son now that he's sitting there trying to speak with an Aussie British accent. Every time he opens his mouth, I'm like, be quiet. Be quiet, kid. But he has learned that my negatives does not necessarily mean negatives. He learned that from me. So when he gets around me, he does it more. <laughs> and one day, he's going to get that accent right. And then I'm going to be like, oh my goodness, he can speak with a British accent. I can send him all over the pond now. <laughs> so be able to accept your kids with all their intricacies. Or their weirdness. All their conundrums. Accept those things. And make those things the most important thing of your child. See, I remember watching Jim Carrey. And I thought, man, this man is a real, real idiot. He's a real first-rate idiot. I mean, I have never met an idiot bigger than him on screen. And then when he did that Dumb and Dumber, I'm like, ooh, they picked the right person. For Dumb and Dumber. You know, if you met him, he, he's not that person that you see on the screen. But he taps into that person because it's part of his reality. In the inside, he's a little nutty. He's a little weird. And we pay to see that weirdness. And I remember he wrote a check out to his mom. He wrote a check for a million dollars to his mother. And he said, Mom, one day you'll be able to cash this check. He wrote a check for a million dollars when he didn't have a million dollars. Knowing that one day Mom will be able to cash that million dollar check. What was he saying? I'm like this because of my mom. So today, mothers, happy Mother's Day. Your job is never ending. You are going to lay down at night and always feel tired. 
that's not going to go away. You took on kids, and your kids will have kids. So soon your house will be even fuller. But I'm thankful to know the moms here are going to pass on things that are powerful to their kids. We may have the next person that can win 100 million people to Christ right here because somebody's mother poured into them. Not because of the message you're hearing today, but because of the mom that's back home with them every single day. Moms, I hope you are encouraged. And as we end, I would like to pray. Father, I thank you for the powerful women you have given us. Lord God, for those who are watching us over the internet, that this is a word of encouragement because sometimes they don't see the good of being a mom. But Lord God, when the good comes, it's right on time. When all their labor would make sense. Father, empower them, encourage them, strengthen them when they're weak. Lord God, give them a hands up when they fall. That they can continue the race that they have begun until they finish it. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.